Welcome everyone to another business strategy webinar by Aegis 360. I'm Ned Parks, glad that you're all here, appreciate it. We're gonna have, uh, this one be a little more interactive maybe than some of the others that you've been on. Uh, this is part three of a three-part mini-series I've done on a COVID business strategy called Stop, Pivot, and Forward. And um, uh, last week we went over some things and then this week we're gonna add something new to it. But before I get into that, our next webinar will be the 12th of May, next Tuesday, um, about a 30 minute webinar on a leader's daily questions. And then the following Tuesday, we will have the tips, tricks, and do's and don'ts of online presenting no matter what platform you're on. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel set up where we record these and place them all on the YouTube channel so you can go there and subscribe to it. If you miss one, you'll automatically be able to go see what it is. So we appreciate that. And then, uh, the 27th of the month, if you want to put that down, uh, we're going to do a demonstration on a new um, software uh, simulation that we have available on using agile methodologies and agile tools. And that'll be on May 27th. You'll see more about that coming out. It's going to be about three hours long. Um, and you're going to see how this works and it evaluated as uh, something you may want to bring into your organization. So again, it's complimentary as they all are. So we will uh, get started here in just about two seconds. Uh, I wanted to ask if you could type into the chat box what, uh, what you'd like to get out of today. If you could start putting that in there, uh, that would be great. And uh, let me know what you'd like to get out of today. And um, I'll get set up here on the um, had a little hiccup. I apologize. Let me get it up for you. There we go. There we go. We're up and running. Awesome. Very good. All right, just uh, throw it into the chat box and uh, I'll take a look at that in just a second. I would like to, um, I would like to uh, uh, talk to you a little bit about um, what, we're, what we're working on here. Well, I still got a hiccup here. Hold on a minute, folks. There we go. There we go. We're all set now. Appreciate it. Okay. So that was our, uh, uh, we, we uh, are going to be moving forward on the 12th of May and on May 19th. All right. So this is a little bit of pro probably what it's felt like. We, um, we kind of talked about this the last couple of weeks. And uh, just to get you caught up, if you weren't able to uh, sign in to the others, this is a little bit about what you looked like before. And then uh, hopefully, um, we understand that although everybody is calling this the new normal, it is not. This is the new, not the new normal. It, in fact, is the new abnormal. There's nothing normal about all the things that we're having to do right now. Um, it's going to uh, morph into some sort of transient normal, and then we'll get back to the regular normal um, at some point in the future. I wish I could tell you when. There's a lot of people out there that wish they could tell you when, mostly those that play in the stock market, but um, I'm not able to do that for you. I can tell you that, um, that there's nothing normal about not going to the movie theaters, about not going to get to your dentist and so on and so forth. And we're starting now to get into the transient time of, of, of being able to do some of those things, but it's not going to look like it used to. Um, and we're not going to run our businesses like we used to. And then um, at some point in the future, a year from now, or whenever it happens to be, eight months, wh whatever, that, whatever that time frame is, we will, um, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to uh, get back to where we thought things uh, were going to be in the, in, in, in the past. So uh, we're going to get back there, but where we are right now is not normal. It's abnormal. Uh, some of you have felt probably a little bit like this. You know, what, what do I do? I'm not even sure where to go. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. We kind of just um, stop um, right where we are. We don't do a thing and, and that can get a little problematic. So uh, we, we, um, we certainly don't wanna be like this forever. 
and we got to have a plan. And we talked about that. And a thing that I've said over and over again is without a plan, there's no change, just chaos. And um, I think that's, that's going to be absolutely critical. Without a plan, there's no change, just chaos. And what I've tried to do over these, this mini series is get you into the idea of doing some planning to get you out of this and to get you out of the panic mode and, and take a breath and, and move into the, the planning side while still maintaining what we have to do because information is coming at us as a, at a pretty rapid pace. Um, at some level, you need to embrace this really, um, really uh, high, high uh, change environment we're in. Um, the government keeps changing their advice. They keep learning new things scientifically, which then changes their advice credibly. I mean, I get that. It's, uh, but we've, we've got to get used to that. And we've got to be able to pivot pretty quick. So we had spoken uh, last week about the growth risk, risk matrix. We went over that. I kind of did a deep dive into how to, how to use it. Um, I'm certainly, if anybody wants it, we're willing to email it out to you and you can have everything or you can go back and watch it again on the YouTube channel. It's there and, and it's obviously free. So one more time, let me ask. Uh, I do have uh, one chat in here. Uh, but if you could come into the chat box and tell me what would you like to get out of today's session? Anything specific that you came looking for or, hey, Ned, you know, we're just here and whatever we take, we'll take. I've got one that's in there now, some insight. What others are feeling is the path forward as we begin to reopen the economy, set the new norms for business. Good. We'll talk about that. Absolutely. And I'll certainly give you my opinion on what that's going to look like. And, and uh, uh, the one thing I'll say is, you know, there's a deluge of articles out there being written about, you know, everybody's going to be working from home and everything's going to be different for here and forevermore and so on and so on and so on. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure that that is going to happen. I think there will be some changes long term. I think more people have worked from home before and so on and so forth. I, I, as I said last week, if I was a commercial real estate person, I don't know that I would be upset that all my offices were going to automatically shut down and nobody was ever going to come back in. Um, on a macroeconomic basis, we might see a very little bit um, squash, but I don't know that there's a lot. Uh, another uh, question, Ned, any tips on how to ensure your employees are on the same page, um, that things are going to be different, that they were mass lines of business, so on and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we will talk about that. So thank you for chatting that in there. I appreciate it. If anybody else has anything, go ahead and throw it in there. It, it is perfect at, at any time. That's fine. So today, what we're going to kind of get into a little deeper and, and have this pretty interactive, and I, and I hope things work and that you'll jump on there with me, is we're going to look at the old-fashioned SWAT. Now, if you've never done one of these before, this will be new. If you have, uh, this will be old hat, but maybe, maybe I'll give it just a slightly different twist for you, hopefully, a couple different ways to look at it. And also, I will throw out there some other ways that... Um, that you can uh, utilize this that I think are very, very helpful. So let's kind of do a little history on this. For those of us that have used it for like the last 20 years, sometimes it's good to kind of go backwards and say, where did that come from? And so it's been around since the 1960s. I did quite a bit of research. Nobody is 100% sure what professor, it's usually a professor that come up with these things, or author or guru invented this, but uh, it's been attributed to about seven different people that I could find and, and uh, the one place that, hey, nobody really knows and it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, it, but it's been around since the 1960s. Uh, what it's original use for is I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you that I have used it over the years very successfully in kind of the following areas. Uh, it's great in a marketing arena. If you're having a marketing discussion, you know, and you're trying to, to, to set your marketing, it's a fabulous tool to use for that. I use it uh, dramatically in strategy. In fact, when I do my strategic planning for clients, we send out an electronic uh, survey to get information back from the stakeholders, uh, customers and, and other stakeholders and so on and so forth. And we actually build this right into it. What, are the, what is the SWOT? What are the strengths, weakness, opportunities and, and trends that you see for this uh, or threats, either one, and you can use it either way, that you can see for this, um, for this particular company and any great amount of what we do comes out of that. Does it have limits? Every tool does, absolutely. But I can tell you, if you just take it and, and, and just look and see where your themes are, and it's great for theming something out to kind of see what that is. Another place I like to use it, which a lot of people haven't heard of before, is on personal development. And I, not only mine, but uh, employees. This is a great tool to use 
with an employee or, or all of your employees and say, you know, what is this person's strengths? What are their weaknesses? What opportunities might they have? And what trends am I seeing or threats, depending upon, again, depending upon what word I, I use interchangeably, sometimes both, but um, you know, what, what are the, maybe you've got an engineer and the trend is uh, that they're really strong in, and this would go back obviously a few years, but their, their strength was in uh, their ability to draw a, a draft, to, to do drafting. Um, and, and the weakness might have been the computers. The opportunity was learn the computers. And the trend is computers are going to take that over. And as we've seen, drafting tables have all but disappeared off the face of the earth. You don't see that anymore like you used to. So that would be one where you could take that into and use it with an employee. We're going to use it today in more of the strategy line. Um, the marketing can always overlap there. Uh, but we're going to use it today and saying, what's our strategy moving forward? What are we going to do? Um, and how do we go about doing that? And then we're also going to uh, put some of these other uh, things that have been brought into the chat box. We'll certainly discuss those. And then there's one called matching and converting, uh, which it's been used for for a long time. Where do we match things up? How do we convert them from one to the other? So in other words, uh, I just gave you the example that the weakness is I don't know the computer, the opportunity is to learn it. So the matching is a computer and the converting is to convert it to the opportunity to learn it and move forward. So, so we're going to kind of look at it that way. So uh, uh, those are just some, some examples. Um, I've seen it used with departments, whole companies. I've seen it used with a product. I've seen it used with a line of, a very specific line of business. If I was in healthcare, maybe I might uh, be wondering, should we be in the, in the uh, um, open heart surgery business? Well, I don't know. Let's look at, let's do a SWOT analysis analysis just on open heart surgeries as it applies to our setting and, and our capabilities. So there's really no limit into where you can use this. Um, are there other tools out there? Yeah, this one's been around a long time and we keep using it because it's frankly, it's pretty good. It really is. Um, again, is it the end all? No, uh, but it certainly can give us a foundation and, and let us know where we really are. So let's talk about it a little bit so we all have our uh, head wrapped around it um, in, in the same way. So at the top, what you have is your strengths and your opportunities, which are positive influences. Those are things that are good. You can put it that way. Those are great things. Those are the things that here's an opportunity for us over here. Uh, that's a good thing. Here's our strength, something we're really good at here. Um, on the bottom, I'll go top to bottom, then I'll go left to right. On the bottom is a negative. That would be the opposite. So a weak, weakness is a negative influence. A threat is a negative influence. Certainly, I can promise you um, I doubt that, that many businesses out there had threat COVID entire world shuts down as a threat back in January if they did one of these. I would hope that somebody in the government somewhere in one of those places that plans for these things, I certainly hope they had it as a threat to them because if they didn't, uh, we weren't able to plan for it very well. Um, on the internal side, on the left-hand side, your strengths and your weaknesses are more internal. In other words, those are things that are within, okay? Those are things that um, like my example of the strength of a great engineer whose weakness is computers. Those are internal. A company who's really great at manufacturing and his weakness is uh, pivoting to a new product or being able to, they're not agile enough to move. They're pretty, pretty weighted down by bureaucracy would be a great example. So that would be a weakness to them. Um, on, the, on the external side, the two, uh, the two items on the right, um, opportunities and threats, those are external. Those are things that are outside of us. There's an opportunity over there. Uh, I'm in the, uh, the, the uh, uh, alteration business. I make dresses and I alter clothes. And an opportunity has come up that, you know, I can make uh, masks and sell them. There's an opportunity there. Um, what's the threat of that? There is a threat to that, by the way. Um, well, it could take away from my core business. Um, I might lose customers because I'm spending time on masks and I'm not getting the suit tailored or the dress tailored fast enough. So there's some things we have to talk about there to make sure that we don't, um, we don't let those things become a problem to us. So um, that is how the SWOT works. It's the positive, the negative, and then uh, that's the top and the bottom. And then on the left is the internals, what's on the inside, and on the right is the externals or um, what's on the outside, the opportunities and the threats. So when we put the two things together that we've kind of talked about, right? We last week went over the growth risk matrix. Um, I would at every stage, I would do just as an example, 
Um, I would do a SWOT analysis in all four stages if I was looking to get into a new line of work, if I was looking to add in to um, uh, a new product or a new service, or I was going to pivot to something else. I would do one for each of those. So in other words, if I was making, um, uh, well, I'll use my alteration shop as an example. If I was going to start making uh, masks and tell them to my existing customers, I would do a SWOT analysis on the number two area that we talked about last week. If I was going to, um, uh, actually, that would be three. Actually, it would be three, wouldn't it? Because it's a new product. I had made masks before, um, but it's to existing customers. And so I would do that, right? Um, and then you could say, well, I'm going to go up there and sell it to all new customers. And in fact, um, there's a, I'm a new customer to an alteration shop uh, out by where I live. They had a little sign up, said mast. I drove in, I bought one, I'm a new customer. So I'm, I'm the same kind of a customer, so it doesn't fit into this perfectly. I'm, um, uh, I'm still a, con uh, a retail customer to them, but I might take my alterations there uh, later. So I would, uh, where, whatever area I was going in, I would do a SWOT analysis into that to kind of bring these two things together to make sure that you understand that we just didn't do these. I, I didn't set these out as two completely separate things. They really do work hand in hand. And I think it's important that we understand that. And sometimes you need some outside help to say, help me, help me understand how this fits and, how, and, and what I'm doing here. Okay, so, um, uh, well, I jumped way ahead there, sorry. All right, so what I wanna do on the SWAT is I actually wanna work a SWAT with you. So I'm gonna change my screen here and we're gonna go to the whiteboard and um, see if we have set up and we're set up and ready to go. So here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to, within your own business, we don't need to know what business you're in. I just wanna do this for illustrative purposes so folks can kind of see what we're doing here. I would like you to throw into the chat window, in your line of work, what are some strengths that you have? What are some things that you say, you know what, we're really, really good at this. This is something that we're really good at. And um, so I'd like uh, to hear from, from everybody. Just go ahead and chat it in there. What, what, and I don't care what business you're in, it doesn't matter. Um, you're gonna see a lot of overlap here and a lot of things that look the same. And I will, uh, I will type them in the box here as we go. So um, technology awareness and expertise in using. Okay, so I'll put tech awareness and um, expertise. Okay, uh, anybody else? And don't leave me hanging here. Um, I can type in some for you, but uh, I got several people on the call. So what else are you good at in your area? Um, oh, okay, longevity, good. Uh, and I'm gonna guess that that's longevity of, um, of your employees, of your company, um, that's internal. It could also be longevity of your customers, depending upon how you're looking at that. You could look at it a couple different ways. Uh, firm knowledge base, okay. All right, anybody else got something to throw in there? Um, I'll, I will say one um, that I always like to hear when I'm working with a client, um, employees. And we'll just use that in the general sense. That might be, uh, we've got employees that have been here a really long time. Um, and, and, I, and I'll say, uh, I'll take from Melissa's, she said longevity. And I think she was talking about the firm itself has been around for a long time. Um, uh, and in and, and, and another company, we'll just say the employees longevity. Um, and then you'll see, see something that I'm gonna do here. Maybe, uh, maybe we have a good reputation with clients, okay? All right, that's, that, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Let's go to, uh, and, and by the way, a lot of people say, Ned, which should I do first? Should I do the, the strengths and then the weakness? Should I do the, the threats or the trends and then the, and then the opportunities or, you know, what, what should I do? What should I do first? And I, when I made out my little uh, uh, SWOT analysis here, I got them a little bit different, but that's all right. I got the W up here in the upper right-hand corner and the O down there, but it doesn't matter for our purpose here, it, it doesn't matter. Um, yes, uh, please chat into all the attendees, not just the panelists. It'll make it, uh, it'll little, make it a little bit easier for everybody else to see. Um, 
you, you know, uh, one of the other uh, things that we're going to put over here is insight. Yeah, we can have great insight into what it is we do and how we do it. Um, so it doesn't matter to go back um, to, uh, oh, good one, Craig, thank you. Um, fast pivot, or I'm going to say agile, um, which is the same thing. Are we agile? Can we move? Can we, uh, can we change um, uh, experience? All right, so let's go over to uh, the, um, the weakness. What do we have as far as weaknesses in our particular organization? So I'm going to give you one of mine from, from mine. I, I'm, I'm a small um, employee uh, group. So what does that mean from a weakness standpoint? Well, I don't have a ton of depth of people and we have to rely on a lot of the things that we do and some of the things that we do certainly with outside vendors, right? And we have to uh, wait in line sometimes if we're not their primary customer. And uh, so I don't have an internal social media person. I don't have an internal um, uh, tech uh, webinar or web person, pardon me. I don't have, you know, a, an internal computer person to fix my computers. We have vendors for those things because we're pretty darn small. That can be a weakness. Now, I will also tell you because we're small can also be what? It can also be an experience because it allows us to have what? A lot more agility. Uh, we, can, we can move and change a lot quicker. So. There, there's, a, there's a great example of where these things can lie on, on uh, different areas. So what other weakness you, might you have in your particular organization or group? It doesn't have to be a company. It could be, um, it could be um, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. I would say that uh, for, for some, uh, one of the weaknesses I hear all the time is um, that they're not agile. In other words, they're pretty bureaucratic. Um, it takes a lot to get things going. Oh, one person organization. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Uh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> um, okay. I won't make any comments on that, Craig, but <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, that can certainly be a problem without, without question, um, being stubborn. Uh, Mike just said, well known to customer base, but not the general public. Ooh, um, not well known to uh, general public. Yep, that can certainly be a weakness. Um, and and as, you're, as you're seeing this, what should be going on in your mind right now, you're already seeing some opportunities, aren't you? I could say, well, there's an opportunity for us to do what? Get well known to the general public if that's something that fits into your overall strategy, right? I can say it stays here, but one of the things I'm gonna do is come down here as an opportunity and say, you know what, we're gonna go out and get well known to the general public. So you're gonna see how these things begin to connect with one another very, very quickly. So let's come down to opportunities. What are some opportunities that you might have in your particular organization or business right now? Well, one organization that I'm, I'm with, it's a nonprofit, uh, we have an opportunity to uh, do uh, do some, and, I, and, I, and that's important, meetings online. And you might go, well, is that an opportunity really? Or is that, you know, how is that an opportunity? I think you're forced into it. We actually were forced into it, no question about it. But what that's doing is expanding our geographic footprint. So, and that's one of the things that that's gonna do for us right? That's, that's one of the things. Uh, one of the opportunities we have is to encourage our clients to prepare for now. Yes. Um, so um, uh, I'll say connect with clients about now. And that could open up a whole other line of business for somebody that's in the, in the consulting area or in, in any area, really. Um, learn new ways and processes. It Absolutely. Learn new stuff, right? And uh, I will tell you that I had done Zoom about four times in the last forever um, up until about three weeks ago or 10, five weeks ago, I guess it has been now. And I'm telling you what, I'm getting really good at it. I'm learning a whole new way. I'm taking a lot of our uh, deliveries and I'm moving them to an online platform. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about how I'm doing that as a, just as an example, not, not as a sales pitch necessarily, but just to give you an example of it. Um, so yeah, we have an opportunity to learn a whole new, uh, learn a lot of new stuff, both processes, products, 
uh, ways of doing things, reinforce relationships while others sit back. <laughs> I love it. Thank Craig. That's a good one. Yes. Uh, reinforce. Um, uh, uh, relationships. There we go. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm, I've heard more lately from uh, my accounting firm in the past couple of weeks about updates and what's going on. And, and that's a part of their job. They should be doing that. But, but, I've, uh, but I've also thought, you know, there's probably more of that that they could be doing to make sure that they do what? Stay top of mind with me and add value. And that's the other opportunity is um, we can add value, right? And um, there's a lot of value out there we can add. We can charge for it. We can give it away. We can do it as an add-on. We can, we can just add value. Maybe it's just add value to my neighborhood, right? Maybe it's not about the economic side of it. But we're, we're talking about this from a business. So where can we add value? What can we do different? I, I think that it's really interesting that the medical community fought tooth and nail for a very, very long time about telemedicine. Oh, my gosh. It was like, don't want to do it, don't anything to do with it. And my golly. Uh, they're doing telemedicine now, aren't they? And I, and that's one that I think they're going to say, you know what, there's a huge uptick to that, that really can um, uh, lessen a lot of the problems in our scheduling in our offices. We can actually probably increase our revenues. We can see more patients. I mean, seriously, if if I have an ear infection and I'm and I'm 40 years old and I'm pretty good at figuring out what an ear infection is, I get them every spring. Do I have to set an appointment and come in and have you go, yep, got ear infection? Yeah, probably not. You know, I think we, there's a lot of things we can probably do over telemedicine that um, the community, the industry has been, um, has been uh, uh, just said, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I think that, um, I think that uh, we're going to see a lot of that. So what are some threats and we'll do threats and trends because I like to talk about this just a little bit differently. Um, what are some, uh, what are some, oh, permission to quit or retire? Yeah. Uh, and this has, you know, um, um, and I liked how, uh, Melissa, you said permission. Um, I thought that was, that's an interesting choice of words instead of a force, right? It's permission to retire. Yeah, I suspect that there will be a lot of people that are close to retirement that are going to go, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm good. Uh, that, uh, that cabin down in South Carolina that uh, we go to twice a year, I'm heading down there and I'm not leaving. And uh, I'll let somebody else uh, hire an estate company and sell them my nonsense and we're out of here, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have no doubt that a lot of people will, will do that. I hope that they look at it in the same way you just looked at it, that it's a permission to go do this. You're not forced to do it. Um, but I hope if they make that decision, they go, you know what, I I'm ready. And this was just what I needed. I was going to stick it out for another two years and I don't want to stick it out in this mess. I'm done. And if they're in a place to do that, good for them, right? Good for them. Um, yes, Altman was an early adopter of telemedicine. You're right, Craig. They, they got kind of got onto it um, a little quicker. So what are some threats that we have out there? What are some of the threats that we might have? Well, um, new tech, right? Um, if you're not very good at doing all this online stuff, and by gosh, if we haven't seen some examples of not very good at doing it, you haven't been paying attention to the news. Um, we've seen people go to the bathroom in the middle of meetings. We've seen all sorts of stuff going on out there. So new tech and just learning it and figuring out how we're going to put that together. Clearly, that can be a, a threat, no question about it. Um, becoming paralyzed by fear of loss. Yes, money, people, business. Um, yes. Paralyzed. Uh, Craig said that uh, COVID hangs around uh, longer than we think. And, th and that's really, a, a, that's a brilliant one to put in here as we kind of talk about moving this business forward and using this SWOT analysis to say, what are our next steps? You know, it can really change things a lot. So um, yeah, some of the threats are new tech paralyzed, COVID longer than we think. Um, I, I don't even want to talk about this, but employee sickness due to COVID. You know, as we start to come back together again, as, as careful as we may be, there's still that opportunity, right? That there's going to be some sickness. Um, increased 
health cost is a threat for sure, you know. Um, some other threats are um, um, uh, some of our customers may go out of business. Some of them could do that for sure, right? I mean, I would be, I'll tell you what, if I was in the wholesale food distribution business, uh, man, let me tell you something, I would be, I would really be spending a very long time right now and, and, and really trying to pay attention to which of my restaurants were, do I feel were financially strong enough to weather the storm and which ones are probably going away. Just so I know and I can plan, you know, that's, that piece of business is probably not coming back. That piece of business will, but it's probably going to be lower for a while. And those are things that this, this uh, tool will help me just talk it out. Um, a rising tide lifts all boats, but a failing tide beaches just as many, leaving them high and dry. Yeah, I would agree with that, Melissa, and uh, it's very, very true. Market loss to more agile firms. Ooh, yes. Um, yeah, market loss to more agile firms. Oh, um, employees quit, right? Employees just leave for a variety of reasons. Um, some might leave because they've given themselves permission to retire. Some might leave because they're just terrified of coming back in the workplace and they're saying, I'm gonna go work in a different workplace where I, I'm, not, I'm not so closed in, right? Maybe, maybe it's the, the physical structure. Um, you know, I, I'm really concerned for the healthcare community, um, both short-term and long-term. I'm concerned about employees who have been hit really hard dealing with this as caregivers and them uh, coming out of this and going, I can't do it anymore. I certainly can't do another one and I can't, I, I can't, or those who worked in it and they go, you know what, I can stay in healthcare, but I am, I'm going to work for a dermatologist. I got weekends off. I'm leaving the ICU. I'm out. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, so I'm really concerned about what this is. And, and if I was in healthcare, this would be stuff I would be looking at really carefully. And I would be really taking the pulse of my employees and finding out what stress level have they been under? Which departments? How could we deal with that? Um, what kind of vicarious uh, PTSD might they be feeling? Um, I would be spending an enormous amount of time uh, focused on, on that because the other thing that I'm concerned about for healthcare is the recruiting. You know, uh, it's been tough enough to recruit nurses, uh, techs, um, uh, aides, docs, uh, so on and so forth. Certainly nurses, techs, and aides. Uh, after this and after all the pictures we've seen and the kind of, and how hard they were hit in New York and Washington and some other places, um, and some close at home, um, there may be some of these kids coming out of high school going, I'm going to be a nurse going, you know what, I think I'm going to be a, I don't know, an engineer. I'm going to do something, but I'm not doing that nurse thing. I thought that was all for me. But after seeing that, I'm out. So I'm concerned a little bit for healthcare long term from a recruiting but into the industry, forgot recruiting into your hospital, just let's get them recruited into the industry. So that's a conversation I'd be having right now if I was in the, in the healthcare business of, you know, how will this impact us um, from a loss standpoint, uh, what we have currently to a recruiting standpoint uh, early on. Uh, so that would be one that I would be uh, taking a hard look at. Um, I think another threat is um, the unknown, right? Uh, we, do, what, we don't know what we don't know right now. And, and there's a lot that we don't know. And I think it's really important. And if I was leading a client through this, I'd say, let's make a long list of all the things we don't know. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's really understand what is it we don't know. And I think that's really important to identify and be really honest with ourselves and everybody else what it is we don't know. Now, as you look at this, and this is a pretty good list here, um, we've got some things that we can start to take action on, both in the near term as well as the long term. So I talked a little bit about employees and employee stress, and I'll just kind of put um, employee stress down here as well. So um, uh, I would certainly to be taking a look at this and saying, okay, uh, the threat of employee stress is pretty high. Um, do, do we have a really powerful uh, employee assistance plan and have we really broadcast that widely to our employees that it's there for them to use? You know, that's one of our weaknesses. We've not done a very good job of that. So guess what? That has now become an action item. And, and I, I might add to you 
that that action item is something you can put into play this instant, right now, today. Um, we can go to the managers. We can say, this is something you need to talk about, at least in the, in the near term on a weekly basis. Uh, every manager I teach and coach, I say, you need to be talking about this in the long-term basis uh, at least once a quarter. Uh, right now, I think you need to, to, to tighten that up. You need to be reminding employees, guess what? We've got an employee assistance plan. Here's what it covers. Here's how you use it. That's one. Wh whatever kind of a wellness plan you have going on, you might want to think about kicking that up. If you're doing some yoga, Wednesday yoga, right? Or whatever. Um, you might want to do it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or something. Um, you, you might want to say, let's not only, let's not just hand them the EAP, that's a huge piece, right? But let's take a really hard look at what we can do internally, right? To really get people to understand this. Maybe, maybe we have a little fun Friday exercise where we go out for 40 minutes and we throw bean bags at each other, a nice social distancing, right? Just to laugh a little bit and phew, man, you know, whatever. I would be taking a long, hard look at what can I do to relieve stress of my employees? That would be something, I don't care what business you're in. Everybody's feeling stress right now. Everybody, doesn't matter. Everybody's feeling stress, what can I do? Um, and, and if you're coming back into the workplace, I was on a big call, I have been on several big calls. And um, I, I think I might've said this before, I'll say it again. Uh, there was a person on the call really lamenting over, do we supply masks for our employees? Um, if you want to up their stress, tell them no. Tell them they have to find their own. That's a great way to up their stress. Look, you're having trouble finding them. Think how hard it is for them. You can probably buy them cheaper than they can. Um, I would tell you, uh, you need to go out and buy masks and supply them for your employees, period, in a conversation. One way or the other, that needs to happen. Uh, so as I look at this, I say, well, there's an example. Uh, let me take a look at um, my small employee group. Um, whether I'm one person or in my case, you know, I'm, I'm three. And I say, okay, so, so that's a weakness of mine. It's one we've identified before, but really right now, what can we do? Well, all right, I'm gonna look out and I'm gonna look at my vendors, you know, who takes care of my website and what should I be doing there and who takes care of this and what should I be doing there and, and picking up the phone and calling my banker and saying, okay, you're gonna help me with this or my insurance agent or my accounting firm or my law firm or whatever it happens to be. Um, uh, what, whatever it is, we want to reach out to those folks and find out a couple of things. One, I just had a guy reach out to me, didn't know him. He found me online. He said, hey, I'm doing a quarantine sale. I'm, what was he doing? He's trying to drum up some business. He goes, I'm putting together websites, right? And he's up in Cleveland. And I ended up talking to him on the phone. I don't have a website for him to put together. But I ended up talking to him on the phone because I thought his approach was interesting. And we just had kind of a general conversation. But he's like, hey, I'm a small operator. Uh, a lot of my clients are not doing any upgrades to their website, which is something I do a lot of. Uh, a, a lot of his business was built around people paying him some flat fee per month. And then he does automatic updates and edits and stuff like that. Guess what? They're chopping cash. So they're holding on to cash. So they're going, hey, guess what? We're not gonna do anything to that website for the time. He's going, oh man, what's happened to my income? So he's out there going, well, you know, I'm gonna get busy and try to find some more. So. Um, he's small, but he's reaching out. Um, I call, I said, well, I want to talk to him. What do you, what, what, what do you offer? You know, tell, tell me a little bit about your service. And a lot of times I'll do that in my business because I do a lot of referrals and someone will say, you know, I need this. And they go, well, that person over there is not going to fit what you're asking, but this one might. So I just wanted to have a conversation with him. So I thought that was quite interesting. He is very agile. Um, uh, uh, but again, when you're small, um, and you're a one-person organization, you need to start thinking about your, um, your uh, vendors that you have. And if you don't have one, you might want to think about starting to get them. Um, probably should have started thinking about that before, right? And, and also your colleagues, who else is out there? And, um, and the good news is you are agile, so you can make uh, changes quickly. Um, so one of the questions I had come in is, Ned, any tips on how to ensure your employees are on the same page? that things are going to be different than when they are a uh, mass. So, uh, you know, this is about culture building and I have said that over and over again. Um, and, and here's what I will tell you. It's, it sounds, you're gonna say, Ned, I've heard you say this before. And if you ask me a second time or a third time or next week, I'm probably gonna say the same thing. Um, communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, I, I did a, a webinar for the Akron Chamber a while back on 
you know, the, the leadership traits you need in a crisis. And I think that we need to up the game on those. And one of those things that I talk about is to communicate with your employees what you know and what you don't know. And tell them the minute I know this, you'll know this. And so really try to bring that forward. I think that is a huge piece to this puzzle is this is what I know and this is what I don't know. This is the direction we're going. This is the things we're gonna do. We don't know what's gonna change. You know, we don't know what science is gonna to do to us. Um, we could, you know, we could have a miracle drug tomorrow, right? And inside of six months of people getting the vaccine, they could say, you know what? All this stuff is over. It's, forget it ever happened. It'll be a, a paragraph in a, in a history book. Okay, great, right? I, I don't think that's gonna happen, but it would be nice, but it could. Any, uh, more likely, they're gonna find out as they already have, they're gonna find out new things, right? They're gonna find out new symptoms. They're gonna find out it attacks this particular person, it does this. So I, I think that the bad news, the bad new news is gonna be a little bit more than the good new news. And I, and I would just, I think that it's important for us to just tell our employees this. I, I, I never understand why leaders feel the less I tell them, the better off they'll be. I don't wanna upset them. You know what, people want to know. You wanna upset them, don't tell them. That, that's a great way of upsetting them. And we've seen that, you know, we've seen governments do it on many different things. We've seen uh, politicians do it. We've seen, I've seen companies do it. I mean, it's a very human thing. It's not, that no one group uh, uh, is more guilty of this than another. But, but I can tell you, just be honest with them. Tell them what you know and tell them what you don't know. I tell them what is gonna change and tell them this is gonna change and we're gonna do this. We're gonna do the right thing. And I will also tell you that certainly um, doing the right thing can be a struggle. We've seen that um, with our governor has done, um, you, you might disagree technically whether it's the right thing, but what you can't disagree with is the man has done his, his level best to try to do what he felt was right based upon the facts that were given to him. Now you can argue, uh, you can have a scientific argument over those facts. That's another a topic for another day. But what people can't do is say that, that he hasn't put his heart and soul um, and probably a lot of sleepless nights into trying to do the right thing. And, and I find that people, um, employees and citizens are pretty darn good at giving you a leeway when you say, we're gonna do it because it's the right thing to do. Even if it's hard, it's the right thing to do and we're gonna do it. It's expensive to buy masks for all the employees. We're gonna do it anyway, because it's the right thing to do. We're gonna figure out how to make that happen, right? Um, that's just what we're gonna do because it's the right thing to do. I know a very small business that wanted the really good masks. They wanted the K95s, which is a version of the N95. And uh, they're not, not cheap and they had to buy 250. They're not gonna use 250 in the next 18 months. And they said, we want the good mask because it's the right thing to do. It's gonna cost us a lot of money right now, which we really don't have, but it's the right thing to do. And I want people that are in this building to feel right. And I want them to have the maximum protection they can have. So that's what we're gonna do. Wow, you know, you can, you can argue whether the mask is, is what you should be doing or not, but you can't argue with that small little business said, we're gonna do it because it's the right thing to do. And that's, fi that's final, right? That's just what we're gonna do. So I think the other thing um, to this is um, just be honest, things are, things are gonna change in the short term. We don't know how long this is gonna last. Uh, these are the things we're gonna be doing. Um, we, we need everybody on board. Uh, and then you need to model the behavior. So, you know, the CEO of your organization, the person that typed this question in, they had better be wearing a mask, um, period. Or if there's a shortage of masks, they say, I'm working from home because I don't wanna eat up the masks of the other people that really need it. And, and then you know, do video conferencing and say, you know, we're gonna do this because we want you to have it. I think that will probably go farther to do the right thing than anything. There's, you know, I'll never forget, um, we, uh, we, we had a rule in the army on the aircraft that um, your sleeves had to be rolled down. Now, the reason your sleeves had to be rolled down is all army uniforms have um, uh, flame retardancy built into all of them at some level. And in the aircraft, in case we crashed and there was a fire, you'd have maximum protection. Well, that may not be a big deal in the winter when everybody's sleeves are down anyway, but in the summer when the sleeves are worn up, 
uh, rolled up, bringing the, 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 the sleeves down and then rolling them back up again for a 15 minute flight. It's a real pain in the rear end, let me tell you. But um, leadership understood one thing. I, don't, I didn't care what. Leadership understood one thing. They understood if they didn't roll the sleeves down, nobody was going to roll their sleeves down. It's that simple, period. And they did. And I got kind of smart. I, I commandeered an extra large army overcoat uh, a field jacket, and I used to keep it on my aircraft. And uh, when I had a senior, senior officer, a general who really didn't want to roll his sleeves down or, or anybody really, um, I'll never forget, I picked up a three-star general one time and I walked out, the aircraft was running. I walked out to greet him and give him his briefing. And uh, he, he was a, a large fellow and he said, uh, he said, I, I suppose you're gonna make me roll my sleeves down. I said, no, sir, I got this jacket for you, which will cover your arms. And uh, we've complied with the regulation and the safety. And he said, I want to fly with you every day, right? And it was, it was not just a workaround. I mean, it was, a, it was but it was a good one, right? It worked. It, it, it saved everybody. And, um, and, and he wasn't going to get on that aircraft. I, I mean, he would have rolled his sleeves down if I'd asked him. And, and you, we have to understand that as the leaders, that if we're going to ask for behavior, we better model the behavior. It's just that simple. And if you're not going to do that, then everybody just find, finds it to be a little ridiculous. So the bottom line is um, get on it and do that. And I guess I hope that helps the person that typed that in. I hope that helps you a little bit. I, I know where you work. I don't want to say it, but um, uh, that, that's what I would tell you is communicate and, and um, lead by example. And you'll find that everybody else does as well, right? Um, if you're going to sit there then uh, with a mask on, then other people are going to fe feel compelled to sit there with a mask on as well. All right. So um, I want to kind of uh, close this out. I've got a little poll that I want to share with you. Um, and let me bring that up and, and I'll launch it and go ahead and answer the poll if you would. You can't see the, the responses yet, but um, I will share them with you. Um, as they come out. So if you could just answer that, answer that quick poll. Um, if you're going to use the, the risk matrix, the SWOT or both, or um, I probably should have put none on there. Maybe you're not going to use any at all. I would kind of hoping that people would, would use both of these. And again, I'm glad to email these to you, but I have to be honest with you. Um, you can scratch this out on the back of a napkin, especially the SWOT. Um, that's a really easy one. The risk matrix, I've got all my take on it, all the things I've done, and certainly we're willing to share that with you. So five of you have, have answered, that's pretty good. And if I could get just a few more to quick jump on here and, and answer it, um, that would be awesome. But um, so far, everybody's going for both. So I'm gonna end the polling here in a, just about a couple of seconds and, uh, and uh, share it with you guys and then we'll... Um, so everybody's going, everybody that answered anyway is going to you both. And I'm glad to hear that. And, and I want you to understand how they link together. And, and as you use these, look, this is something that, you know, we provide a facilitation service. We use these tools all the time. But I also want you to understand they're not hard to use. And it's very easy for you to use these on your own. And, you know, if you get stuck and you got a question, call me or send me an email. I, I'll answer it. That's fine. I'm, I'm delighted to do that. Just delighted. So let me go back to where we were just a minute ago and uh, kind of bring a, a closure to this. Um, uh, there we go. All right. These are the two tools that we shared over these, uh, these three and then uh, uh, and then in conclusion, as I've said all along, um, and I've said it over and over again, um, the, uh, the, um, uh, a, a, a plan, uh, without a plan, there's no change, there's just chaos. If you don't have a plan, all you have is chaos and you really, you really need to have that darn plan. So I would tell you that um, it's important to have that. So I'm gonna close this out now I want to thank you all. If anybody wants to hang around and chat, I'm, I'm certainly well in, willing to do that. Most of you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, please go to the YouTube channel. Um, we're trying to, I'm going to add my one ask for today is uh, if you would subscribe to that, uh, um, you'll find us. Uh, it's uh, August, uh, Aegis 360 um, on YouTube, you'll find us. If we get enough subscriptions, I can do some uh, customization to it that I'd like to do. So 
Um, and it, it also gives you access to see everything. You don't have to sign up. Anything else you need, reach out. Thank you. Uh, wash your hands, be safe, and wear a mask. Take care.